Are you ready? Get your camera phones ready. We're going to go quick. It starts right here. This is an overhead recovery sheet. It is loaded up on our website. Take a picture of it. All the overheads are listed on one side. The budgeted amount for 2018, what you'll spend each month, and your actual spend at the end. Budgeting is reconciling one column to the next. I budgeted $1,200 for printing. What did I actually spend? And if there's a variation, well, where's that money coming from? We'll talk about that. Make sure you go through printing, postage, professional fees, utilities, salaries. Make sure if you're not on the job site working that your salary is covered. Make sure depreciation, bank charges, bad debt. Bad debt. If somebody hasn't paid you yet, it's coming. Believe me, start budgeting money for bad debt. Uniforms, PPEs, personal protective equipment. Donations, that one's the key to heaven. Don't miss that. Right? Be a bigger part of your community. It will pay you back, I promise. Equipment maintenance, leases, small tools and supplies. This company does $900,000 in gross sales. Their overhead recovery budget is $218,550. Now, what does that mean? That means that looking at just one item, advertising, $12,000 budget, what I'm going to spend per month, and looking at what my totals are. Here we have an $808 variance. Where does that $808 come from? Yeah, profit, yeah, right out of your pocket. So if you're putting 20% profit on all your jobs, end up at the end of the year at about 7%, that's probably where it is. And also, I'm going to back up one more thing because this is very important, that when you put all these numbers down, actual numbers, and reconcile those two columns, you will solve the number one reason the landscape contractors go out of business. What is it? The number one reason landscape contractors go out of business. What is it? Cash flow. Run out of cash. Can't pay your guys, can't pay for your materials, and you're done just that quickly. So if you know what's going out every single month, you know what's coming in every single month, you reconcile those as well. So it is a great start. So we have $212,000, $218,550 in overhead, we need to recover. How do we do that? I use what's called the single overhead recovery system. I recover my overhead based on one variable, my biggest variable, which is billable man hours. So I'm going to work 7,840 man hours. I will bill out that many man hours in 2018. That means I have to recover $27.88 for every man hour I bill just to pay my overhead my cost of doing business. So we saw where this came from. Where the hell did that come from? Well, right here, 7,840 hours, four crew members, 49 hours a week, half hour for lunch, half hour for two 15-minute breaks, 10% for overtime, 40 weeks a year. So the math is 7,840. How do we know it's right? How do you know it's right? Calculator. Okay, I'm with you there. Yeah, we've done the math. Okay, but what did you do last year? That's right. So you look at historical production, right, and say last year we built out 7,762 man hours. We want to grow our business. We have budgeted 7,840 billable man hours. And just because you're growing your business by 10%, doesn't mean your billable man hours go up by 10%. Go talk to Phil at Pave Tool Innovators. Go talk to Corey at PaveTech because there's tools out there where you can actually reduce your labor expenses by integrating tools and techniques and systems. So very important. So we have 7,840 billable man hours. Now we're getting closer to what we should charge per hour. Let's take it to the next step. That next step is average wage rate. What is my average wage rate? I pay four people, foreman, leadman, labor, labor, an hourly rate. And is that hourly rate relevant to here? I don't, I don't know. If it is, great. If it's not, I just made them up, right? $95 an hour, I divide by four. So my average wage rate is $23.75. Earlier we said our overhead is $27.88. So now we're very close to what we need to charge per man hour. We're missing one thing. That one thing is called labor responsibility. Labor responsibility. You probably have never heard of that because I made it up. <laughs> it's probably why. Now, I have a degree in accounting, and in accounting, they don't call it labor responsibility. They call it labor 
Burden, that's right. But I hate that word burden. I'll give you a good example. Jesus gave me a gift. He gave me my wife and daughter. And he said, here they are. They are your responsibility. I want you to take care of them. I want you to love them. I want you to help them. I want you to be responsible for them. I said, thank you, sir. Yes, I will be responsible. I never look at my wife and daughter and point my finger at them and go, you two are a burden. You're a backpack full of rocks dragging me down. They're my responsibility. I love them. That's how we have to look at our team, folks. So how do we do that? How do we take responsibility for our team? Well, we call it a labor responsibility chart. Here it is. At the top, you see the things that you know about. FICA, FUDA, SUDA. You see workman's comp. You see liability insurance. Those things are mandated. You have to pay them. Then we start to piss a couple of people off with that first word under liability insurance, which is vacation. Ooh, are you telling us you want us to start offering vacation to our team? I don't know. Answer this question. Show of hands, how many people in this room hate vacation? Think it's the worst thing ever? Loathe the thought of ever going again. <laughs> Come on. Nobody hates vacation. How powerful is it when a husband and wife and their kids are on vacation and one elbows the other and goes, we're on vacation and we're getting paid. It's a pretty powerful statement, isn't it? Below that, you see holiday pay, Easter, Christmas, Thanksgiving, family time that they get to be home with their family and still being paid. Below that, you see health insurance. Now some of you are getting mad. Oh, my God. You, you can't expect us to pay health insurance. Well, I'll tell you this. The number one way you will lose good people, the number one way you'll lose good people is somebody will tap them on the shoulder and say, we offer health care for you and your family. And I don't care what you're paying them and how great it is, they will leave. Because their responsibility is to that family to make sure that they're covered in the eventuality that something should occur. So think about it. Now, how do you do it? Well, I'll tell you how we do it at Block. We have what's called health savings accounts. I have one. I put in a bunch of money. They put in a little bit of money, right? We have a high deductible. It's fine because we have these little debit cards, and we accrue money. And when my wife and daughter get sick, they go and they swipe the card, and they get better. That's how it works. And if something catastrophic were to happen and all our funds were depleted, they're covered to infinity. It's an awesome program. Cost the employer a little bit, cost the employee a little bit, and now you have some kind of coverage in case your kids or wife, or you, or whoever is sick. It is worth it. The next one's life insurance. I like this, I like this because I, I picture one of you leaving here, seeing one of my competitors and saying, hey, hey, how was that Teco show? Oh, I tell you, it went completely off the rails. Paper Pete started talking about life insurance. Can you believe it? Yeah, believe it, because that's what I'm going to talk about right now. Because it's not a joke. We will all die. It is a guarantee. And I know this for a fact. And you think about it for one second. How many members of your team, if they were to die tomorrow, God forbid, if they were to die tomorrow, their family would have enough money, three to $5,000, to have them respectfully buried or cremated? How many of your team have that money in cash available to make that a reality? How many of them? How many of you do? Yeah, it's, it's not a joke. Most people do not have the $5,000 in cash to be respectfully buried or cremated, and it is a guarantee in life that you will die. So you know what it costs you to have a life insurance policy for your team for five grand, a dollar a week, $10 a month, $100 a year, depending on whether they're smoker, overweight, whatever the case might be, maybe 150 bucks and they are covered, and they get to go home and tell their family, look at what my company has done for you. In the eventuality that I would pass, it's covered. You would get a check. And they go, wow, they must really love you. That's right. It's not like, it's love. Absolutely. The next one's disability insurance. And this is a reality because people will be dumb and fall down on the ice. <laughs> you know I love you, right? 
<laughs> and they can't come back to work because they're hurt. The doctor told them, listen, we have surgery, we have recovery, we have uh, physical therapy. You're going to be out for 12 weeks. That member of the team's thinking, listen, I need to be on those jobs. I need to be working on those jobs because I cannot afford to be home for 12 weeks. I will lose my house, my, everything I've saved, everything I've achieved. So what do they do? They come back too soon. And they're limping around and dragging their leg around and they're working and they never really get better. You can get them a small disability policy. Has anyone ever heard of a company called Aflac? Aflac, the little duck in the rowboat. Anyone? Did you think that was just great commercials? <laughs> That's a disability insurance company. And they can give you a policy for 90, uh, 120, whatever days that you want to make sure that if you really are hurt, that in that time period it kicks in and it pays you until your doctor releases you and you can come back to work. So this isn't getting hurt on the job site. That's up here. This is just because we love you. That's right. Personal days. Who's ever picked a sick kid up at school? Dad, I'm sick. Can you come get me? The answer is always, yes, I can. Who's ever been to the dentist? Absolutely. It's just, it shouldn't be called personal days. It should be called life. Life hours. Life days. And if you give them that time to take care of their family and themselves, they will re reward you with hard work. Sick days. How many of your team comes to work hacking, <laughs> coughing, <laughs> sneezing, <laughs> all over everybody else on site. What are you doing here? You're sick. Go home. I can't afford to go home, boss. I got to work. Well, well, that's great to hear because now everybody's sick and our production went to zero. <laughs> it's a reality. Give them a couple sick days. Let them earn them after six months, nine months, a year. And when they're sick, you send them home. 401k, IRAs, retirement savings. Let me give you some advice. You have a better chance of seeing an alien. You wonder where this is going? <laughs> than ever seeing any of the money, maybe, <laughs> the government has taken from you in form of Social Security. There is no bank that says Social Security on it. And in that bank, there's no account with your name on it. They stole your money. And there's still $100 trillion in debt. That money's not there. You'll see an alien first. I promise you. Wouldn't it be nice to have a little bit of retirement savings to the company? An IRA where they put in 100 you put in 10 They put in 500 you put in 50 They put in 1000 you put in 100 And a year turns to 2 turns to 5 And all of a sudden they've got a little nest egg that's actually real that they can say, one day I will be able to retire. One day I will be able to enjoy the fruits of my labor. That's what that is, because the government isn't doing it for you, folks. We're talking about $8.79 in labor responsibility. So we have an average wage rate of $23.75. Labor responsibility, $8.79, $27.88, $60.39. What do I charge for labor? $60.39. It's that simple unapologetically. Earlier I told you I got the frame on my 73 Ford Bronco welded on at a place called Extreme Performance. When I asked him how much it would cost, he pointed to a sign. It had a rate for welding on it. What was it? $100 an hour. Did he apologize? No, because he did his math. He knows he does great work. Will you apologize for that number? If that number is yours, we just did the math. You charge it, unapologetically. Does that make sense? You want to recruit and retain great people? A lot of that's embedded in the 6039. Part of it's the fact that you're here. Thank you. Because if you're not training, you're not gaining. You're not winning. 